Hi and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer move to Arsenal. I'm not going to lie to you, right? I was starting to lose it a bit yesterday um, when I heard that Tottenham are signing Yves Basuma. Um, deal looking to be, could be completed by the end of this week. Um, the the rumours are going to be 25 to 30 million pounds. I was like, what's going on? That is a perfect signing for Arsenal. It's a guy who kind of put it out there a couple of weeks ago that, you know, I want to, I'd love to come to Arsenal. He's reposting stuff and things like that. And we just not gone in for him again. We just didn't move. And I can't tell you how many angry Arsenal fans I met yesterday and spoke to and people who messaged me saying that, you know, number one, why have we not moved in for Basuma? He would be perfect for Arsenal. And number number two, you know, what's with all the inaction regarding Arsenal? I was trying to defend Arsenal. I was saying, Leo, listen, we've got, we've bought in Mike Enos. We're just getting stuff. People are like, what? Look at Tottenham. They've made three signings already now, right? Three good signings. They're strengthening. You know, look at Liverpool. How How is it that Liverpool are able to get Darwin Nunes done so quickly? Haaland's done at City. And we just appear to be drifting around, divering around. And then if you then add into it these rumours that we've been hearing, that have been reported in the press about Mikel Arteta being unhappy. And I asked a journalist about it the other day. I said, listen, I go, come on, I, I've read that story. I don't really see no no basis to that story. And he was say, saying to me, Robbie, listen, these stories don't, you know, like that type of story doesn't just pop out from nowhere. There is probably something that's gone on. Probably, I'm hoping it's just probably, but certainly we have not been active yet in the transfer market. We're doing what we do a lot of times, which is divvying around, taking our time, whilst other teams are getting business done. Now, I don't want to panic because it's still early in the transfer window. It is early in the transfer window. And all right, we haven't been in for Basuma, but we're looking at alternate targets. I mean, it's Tielemans that they want. It's not really Basuma. They want somebody like Tielemans, who's going to be a bit more progressive with the ball. They're probably looking at it saying, listen, we've already got guys like Granit Xhaka. We've got guys like Thomas Partey, who can sort of be that deep-lying player. But somebody like Tielemans will come and bring quality. And he will. He will bring quality to the team. I still think we should be getting Tielemans and a player like Basuma. But listen, fair enough. Um, he's said to be the number one target. Get it done. When's it going to get done? You know, um, he's got one year left on his deal. It's very similar to Basuma. Basuma's got one year left on his deal. Let's, can't we just get it done? It's not 100 million, is it? I don't, I don't know. Um, I think, listen, I understand it again. Once again, let me just say it again. I understand how transfers work and it's not as straightforward as we all think, right? But also, I do feel like Edu, Mikel Arteta, the Kronkies, they're not reading the room here. Fans are still very upset how the season ended. I'm not talking about getting the manager out or nothing like that, but we're upset. We need a lift because, you know, the season ended badly for us. We didn't get into the top four. Tottenham trumped us to get into that position. And now we're seeing Tottenham doing more business than us. And, you know, a lot of Arsenal fans are fearful. You know what I mean? They've got a world-class manager. There's no doubt in him that. They've got Champions League football. And they are starting to show their muscle by tempting players that could have come to Arsenal to go to their place. So, read the room. Get Arsenal fans excited. That all, all, all famous thing that came out from Josh Kroenke that time. Get us excited with some early signings, but... Marquinhos, that's the only one so far is going to be a player going into the youth team. Um, what about this guy? Could this be an alternative signing um, to uh, Basuma? And that is uh, Milinkovic Savic. Now, I, I spoke about it the other day. He's highly rated. He's considered by many people to be a top, top midfielder. But the problem is Lazio are going to want about 60 odd million pounds for him. You know, um, there's even been quotes saying they want a hire. That's why he's been at Lazio for so long. To be fair to them, they've held on to him when clubs have come in hard for Milinkovic Savic, a very, very good player. Um, but again, I, I, even though I see lots of links with us to him today, 
I really do feel it's going to be Tielemans. Tielemans the cheaper one. Tielemans is the one that's showing a willingness to come. Get it done. Um, just like this one. Get it done. Gabriel Jesus. I don't want to be talking about it every single day here on Transfer Daily, but I am at the moment. Because, again, it's still not done. And then there were reports um, today that um, his agents are planning to fly over to uh, Turin to speak to Juventus about a possible transfer um, over there. Now, Arsenal are pretty confident, apparently, on this one. Um, they've, they're have they confident that they're going to get this one done. Edu's already met with um, Jesus' agents, representatives, and he is the number one target. But as I said, it would just be nice to see that deal done when you see deals like Darwin Nunes done over the line, a difficult deal like that to be done, done. Haaland, you just think, what you know, Haaland's left City, Haaland's joined City, Jesus is leaving City, get, get it done. Um, and then, of course, there's the Victor Osimhen one. Victor Osimhen literally yesterday um, admitting that he's open to the possibility of a move. He was asked about it after scoring four goals for Nigeria in a game. He was asked about it, um, you know, could you be moving on from Napoli um, this summer? And he uttered those... Uh, words that a lot of players utter when they love to move but they don't want to upset their club anything can happen that's what he said anything can happen this summer that's not going to please uh napoli uh fans but it'd be music to the ear of some arsenal fans again though 100 million pounds that's what napoli said they want for the player that they bought in from lille he's been a prolific goal scorer I also see him being linked with a move to PSG. So that's also spells danger to Arsenal, even if they also are prepared to pay that amount of money for Victor Osimhen. Um, But uh, he does look like he's open to a move this summer. And then there's the Rafinha links. Now, this one's been going on for quite a few days. Now, from what I've been told, um, these are serious links. Arsenal are seriously interested in signing Rafinha. Now, I would be, again, I'd be excited by that. I'd be excited by a signing like Rafinha. Don't know if it's going to happen. Um, Barcelona is his preferred destination, but it looks like it'd be very difficult for Barcelona to get it done because of uh, their financial constraints. But a signing like Rafinha would have me excited. It would have me excited. If Tielemans, Jesus, Rafinha, I'm starting to get excited. I still feel we need to a bit more solidification in that midfield area at the base of it. But those type of signings will get me excited. But again, guess who else is interested in Rafinha? Tottenham. <laughs> They're coming in for everybody that we're after. And, of course, they can offer Champions League football. We really blew it when we didn't get that Champions League. I can tell you that. Um, link with this guy today, uh, Youssef El Nesri. Now, El Nesri, 25, Moroccan international, plays for Sevilla. Now, he, previous to, you know, not last season, but the previous season, he scored 24 goals, was on fire. Everybody was talking about him. El Nesri this, El Nesri that. How much, you know, Sevilla slapped a unbelievable price tag on his head for any team that was interested in him. However, last season, it weren't the same. He really dipped only five goals he followed up with in 29 games. Had a tough time, had about a COVID that kept him out for a while. Really didn't happen for him last season. And now it looks like uh, Sevilla are willing to sell him. And are willing to sell him. They've named their price around about £26 million. Which for a player, the previous season was being quoted like 60 £70 million. Might seem like a bargain. And a possible plan B for Arsenal. They're said to be showing an interest. Um, and really more him as a plan B. Not, you know, if they can't get, say, a Jesus... Maybe they could move in for in Nesri. As I said, for £26 million, pounds, that's a good price. Could they go in there and revitalise his uh, career? He's also been linked with West Ham today as well. So it'll be interesting to see how that one pans out. But again, it's more of a plan B if the Jesus deal doesn't happen. This one today, Gabriel Mayagalis, has been linked with a move to PSG. Now, PSG are on the lookout at the moment for a centre-back. They're trying to sign Milan Skriniar from um, Inter Milan. Very, very good um, centre-back. However, um, 
<laughs> Inter Milan are holding out for some big money. They want about £60 million. PSG are trying to get them to lower that price. There's a bit a lot of bargaining going on. And a bit like what I was just talking about with El Nesri, where he's a possible plan B to Gabriel Jesus. Um, Gabriel is a plan B if they don't get Skriniar, that they may come in and get Gabriel. Now, Arsenal have got him tied down to a long deal. He's the main um, man at Arsenal. He might, you know, he's, he, last season it was him and Ben White. That partnership is what happened unless there was an injury, especially him playing on that sort of left side of the centre-backs. He's absolutely vital to Arsenal. Scored a lot of goals last season as well. Getting better and better. There is no way, um, I think, Ars well, listen, I say no way, but it's PSG. <laughs> right, but hopefully... Hopefully, there's no way that Arsenal will sell him this summer uh, because he's vital to what Arsenal do. And uh, Lucas Torreira, who, you know, had a very successful loan period at Fiorentina last season and was looking to stay at Fiorentina, has voiced his, um, his anger at Fiorentina for this deal collapsing. Now, Torreira was there on a season-long loan and there was a deal in place that um, at the end of it, Fiorentina would trigger the uh, option to buy for £13 million. He'd apparently sat down and agreed terms with Fiorentina, but then they reneged on all of it, and now he's returning back to Arsenal, and he posted something about it, and he, he was very upset. You can see that he's very angry about it, and spoke about how you know officials or, or people there at Fiorentina uh, acting in a very bad way. You know, you normally see um, a player who's sort of on loan come out and say that. Um, but that's why he's not going to be signing for Fiorentina. There are a lot of clubs after him, though. A lot of clubs over there in Italy still interested in um, Torreira and um, would expect to see Torreira moving on um, this summer. So those are the d links today. I think I speak on behalf of all Arsenal fans. We're getting frustrated already and we're only... <laughs> We're only in July. We got this all the way down to September. Get some of these deals over the line, please, Arsenal, man. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I don't know. As I said, you know, the fans are very, very frustrated. I've got fans, a couple of fans that reached out to me yesterday. I'm big, big supporters of Mikel Arteta. And even they are like, nah, I've had enough. Not so much of Arteta, but the showing their frustration at the owner's and at the inactivity that we've seen so far, it would be great to get a couple of big deals across the line. Thanks for watching the show. I'll be back tomorrow. Don't forget to check out our evening show as well. That's that's brilliant at the moment. And also, tomorrow morning, um, make sure you check us out here on AFTV at 9 o'clock. We are going to be telling you and revealing to you the Arsenal fixtures. We're going to have the Arsenal fixtures. So at 9 o'clock, we are going live and we're going to be going, running through the Arsenal fixtures for the new Premier League season, which is going to be released in the morning. We're going to have those exclusive. So make sure you check us out at 9 o'clock sharp. If you also want to check out like all of the fixtures across all of the leagues, I know on DR, they're also going to be doing um, that live as well. So make sure you check that out. All the fixtures, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. in the morning, UK time. Um, we're going to be going live with all of the fixtures, so I'll be on that. Make sure you check that out. It's going to be interesting to see who we get. Hopefully, it's not the start. Like we were good. Remember last season's start? Brentford away, Chelsea, Man City away. Oh, please, don't give us that this year. We need to get off to a good start. Thanks for watching the show, and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>